Okay, okay, okay. Quickie update, quickie update. Uh, looks like India is the next country to look at banning uh, Bitcoin and virtual currencies. So the Reserve Bank of India on Thursday barred banks and financial institutions from dealing with virtual currencies, including Bitcoin, and said that it, it had time and again warned users of virtual currencies uh, regarding the risks associated with it. In view of the associated risks, it has been decided that with immediate effect, uh, entities regulated by RBI shall not deal with or provide services to any individual or business entities dealing with or settling virtual currencies. So that's what the RBI had to say uh, in that statement. Uh, continuing on, uh, regulated entities which already provide such services shall exit the relationship within a specified time, uh, that time being three months. So this article goes on to say that in the past, uh, the Indian government and the Reserve Bank of India have issued several warnings against dealing in cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoins, uh, the former even comparing it with a Ponzi scheme, which we know is very dubious. Uh, RBI recently warned users of virtual currencies, including Bitcoins, uh, regarding the potential economic and financial risk associated with cryptocurrency. So it's starting to sound like a broken record here, really. Uh, so look, it's, it's a useful article. It's a good article. Um, at least it tells us what's going on. So I think the most important bit is the final paragraph here. Uh, it kind of gives us a bit of a better idea as to where Indian governments, or uh, sweeping generalization, but where where the legislators' minds are. In February this year, uh, Financial Minister Arun Jaitley, I suppose, uh, outlawed the use of cryptocurrencies in India while presenting the uh, union budget in 2018 and said that India would further explore the use of blockchain technology to add muscle to the digital economy. But the, gov the government does not consider cryptocurrency legal tender or or coin and will take all measures to eliminate use of these crypto assets in financing illegitimate activities or as part of a payment system. So it's that latter bit that's a problem for us here. So, you know, the ICO community, talking about us now, the ICO community, because that's what this channel's about, uh, is is full, a very large amount of uh, of Indian investors taking part in airdrops and even managing groups. And so this is a problem for the ICO community. Uh, I'm not sure how uh, these guys are going to go about it. So on one side of the equation, uh, I don't see any real way uh, in that the Indian government can determine who still is holding their tokens, etc. But if you can't cash them out, then what's the point? I, I really don't know. So this is going to be an interesting time. Uh, expect a market dip with this one. Um, I'll link you to a Node Investor video that might uh, give you a couple of ideas as to where the next supports for Bitcoin are, which of course is an indicator for the majority of the rest of the market. But this is a hell of an update, guys. And I, I just need you all to know that this is happening, especially for those of you in the ICO community. And for the companies, uh, for the Indian-based crypto companies, you know, you do have that three-month window, and it'll be very interesting to see whether we've got like another China mass migration situation on our hands, where uh, China did their ban, where a whole bunch of miners and a whole bunch of ICOs, you know, we saw them move over to Japan, so it could be a similar situation again. Uh, but given the current state of the market, current state of the bear market. We also know that ICOs don't quite have as much uh, capital to dispose of uh, for relocation, etc. So it's going to be interesting times, guys. Very interesting times indeed. But we'll talk more about this as the week goes on. I have been your crypto enthusiast, and I'll speak to you very soon.